Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The reason we're here today is because last week we hosted the Global Moon Village Workshop and Symposium from Nicosia, Cyprus. We have today a very important announcement to make, and that's why we have invited you here. Κυρίες και κύριοι, καλώς ορίσατε. Ο λόγος που είμαστε σήμερα εδώ είναι διότι είχαμε την περασμένη εβδομάδα το Παγκόσμιο Συνέδριο για το Φεγγάρι, το οποίο είχε μεταδοθεί ζωντανά από την Κύπρο με όλα τα μεγαλύτερα έθνη για την εξερεύνηση του διαστήματο. Έχουμε σήμερα μια σημαντική ανακοίνωση να κάνουμε και σας καλέσαμε σήμερα εδώ. We have here today with us to make this announcement Giuseppe Rebaldi, the president of the Moon Village Association. We have cosmonaut Dorin Prunariu, the former chair of the UN COPCOS, the Committee of Peaceful Uses of Space. We have with us Ima Ionescu, legal director of the board of directors of the Moon Village Association. And we also have with us, and thank you for that, uh, a representative from the, from the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, Martin Stasco. He's the communications officer of UNOSA. Without further ado, the reason we have invited you here today is because we're gonna make a very important announcement that has been decided at the General Assembly of the United Nations, and that decision was made last week on the 9th of December. For that announcement, I will give the floor now to Giuseppe Rebaldi, the president of the Moon Village Association. Giuseppe. Okay, so first of all, uh, good morning uh, to everyone. And uh, thank you to the Cyprus uh, Space uh, Research Organization to have organized uh, uh, this press conference. I think uh, we are partnering with CSEO uh, in many activity and uh, the last uh, workshop has been very successful thanks uh, to the skill of ex and unique expertise of uh, CSEO. So I think this gives us an opportunity uh, to first uh, briefly explain what is the Moon Village Association, uh, which uh, is basically the organization created in 2017 as an NGO registered in Vienna with the goal uh, to bring together multi-stakeholder, that means industry, or government, space agency, uh, university, and the public uh, to bring them together uh, in uh, fostering cooperation for the lunar exploration and utilization. So this is a unique organization and uh, we are having a number of multi, uh, let's say discipline in our, uh, in our uh, MBA. Amongst those, uh, basically, uh, we are carrying out activity which goes from culture to the technical. So an uh, MVA uh, is uh, observer of the United Nations Committee on Outer Space, COPOS, permanent observer, and is in this capacity that we made the proposal which we are discussing today. So uh, this year in June, sorry, in August uh, of this year, we made a proposal uh, to celebrate uh, the International uh, Moon Day. So uh, this proposal has originated within the NVA uh, by our legal advisor, Ima, uh, that I will later on give the floor to her. So she will explain why she made uh, this proposal. Uh, but uh, so therefore we proposed uh, at the United Nations last August, the celebration of the International Moon Day. What is the International Moon Day? Uh, it is basically an event uh, which will be held on 20th of July to commemorate also the landing of humans on the moon. And in the main goal is to raise awareness among the general public about the status and prospect of programs at the global level of the moon exploration and utilization and at promoting public support for getting involved in this major step for humanity. I believe uh, uh, it is uh, known, uh, but not so much to the public, that uh, the moon is the next destination of, of humanity. As starting with 2022, we will have six missions going to the moon, six. Uh, basically, I will name them because it's important 
to the press to realize. So we'll have Luna 25 from the Russian Space Agency. We will have Chandrayaan-3 uh, from India. We will have Slim uh, spacecraft from Japan. And then we'll have three missions from United States, two commercial, astrobotics and intuitive machine, part of the commercial lunar payload service and a NASA mission Artemis 1. So from this number, you can see that as of 2022, the moon will be very populated. So therefore we felt that to commemorate and discuss on a global scale, what is uh, basically in for the humanity uh, at the level of all the country, it's an important. Uh, and uh, following this proposal to the, uh, to the UN COPUS, uh, this was endorsed by the UN COPUS and it went to the General Assembly. And as uh, uh, George has just uh, explained, the General Assembly approved finally uh, on the 9th of December. And I would like to read uh, because it's very short uh, what the General Assembly has approved related to this. And so the, the, the quotation from the General Assembly says exactly this, declare 20th of July, the International Moon Day to observe each year at the international level, the, you, the anniversary of the first landing by humans on the moon on 20 July, 1969, as a part of the Apollo 11 lunar mission taking into consideration the achievements of all states in the exploration of the moon and to raise public awareness about sustainable moon exploration and utilization. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, so as of next year, we will have the pleasure all over the world and uh, the duty uh, to have uh, this event, uh, uh, which is very important. I will just spend my last uh, word about how we're going to implement this day. Since the MVA has been the organization which has proposed this, uh, this celebration, which has been uh, uh, approved, uh, we are preparing uh, towards the implementation. And uh, so like a similar organization uh, and, and the celebration, which will be attached later by, by Dorian, we will try to, uh, let's say, stimulate local event and we will hear also what the role of Cyprus uh, might be and even potentially also Romania. So local event uh, between the different, uh, let's say organization, uh, school, uh, as well as uh, industry, uh, but also uh, uh, we will also try to foster global event, which will link uh, different capital of the world. Uh, the main message uh, that is important to give is that uh, more than 50 years ago, uh, we went to the moon uh, because of a competition. We are now going forward to the moon because of cooperation. It is because we are going to cooperate with each other with the concept of the moon village that we are going basically to rape the benefit for all humankind. So we are therefore uh, implementing this following this uh, presentation, this approval, and this opportunity offered by CSO to explain this to the press, it's very important because it will be stay whatever and will stimulate the young generation because the young generation is the sustainable element for the future exploration and utilization of the moon. So we are assembling the team and we actually have a vacancy notice which can be seen on our website for the chair of the International Moon Day Group. So you're wel welcome. If you find uh, that uh, you are suitable for the position, you are uh, willing to uh, apply for this position. We are also seeking for founder sponsor. And so we will hear later on also from the other speaker. So I'd like to conclude my intervention, handing over the floor uh, to Ima, uh, as I said, our legal advisor, which, and of course, this brings us to the gender uh, let's say uh, balance, uh, which we really need uh, to have better uh, in the moon village in the future, uh, let's say lunar activity. So maybe Ima, if you could explain why, why did you make this proposal? Uh, what is the root of this proposal? Please, yes, the floor you. is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, the proposal of the International Moon Day has come 
to meet challenges of the new space age based on cooperation, as Mr. Ebaldi said, and uh, not uh, by competition. The moon of the new goal is, is the new goal of uh, space exploration. And we can easily notice that the increasing density of the missions to the moon, the plans for landing humans on the moon and for building permanent bases on the moon. The proposal also aims to familiarize the general public, the taxpayers, with the high importance of the moon exploration. And of course, aims to inspire the public and especially the young generation for such missions. I acknowledge the relevance of the awareness of the public related to space missions through the asteroid day, which definitely inspired me to think and propose the International Moon Day. Thank you very much. Dino Tora. Το βήμα στον πρώην διευθυντή της, ε, του UN Copos των Ηνωμένων Εθνών είναι η Επιτροπή για την Ειρηνική ε, ε, Χρησιμοποίηση του Διαστήματος, Utilization of Space. Dorin Prunario, thank you. Cosmonaut Dorin, Dorin Prunario. Thank you, thank you very much, George, and uh, hello to everyone. I greet the media from Cyprus and from uh, other parts of the world if they are connected. And uh, I want to stress a little bit why UN and why the International Moon Day approved by the General Assembly of the United Nations. Of course, we may organize different events in the framework of our association, but the recognition of the United Nations give a very high importance of what we do. Uh, we as observer members of the uh, UN COPWAS, United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, have a voice in the framework of the UN, which comprise 192 member states. And our committee just uh, comprise about 40 international organizations, non-governmental or intergovernmental. Everything we say at this level is taken into account by all members of the UN. Such way, recognizing the date of 20 July as a very important date for the exploration of the moon, the date which uh, it's important because the first step of a person was uh, put on the moon, uh, has a tremendous importance uh, besides all other events, all other landings and experiments done on the moon. So every year we will celebrate, we will organize scientific activities, cultural activities, we will inform the public about the evolution of the moon exploration, about the goals, of course, about the results. And this is very important to let people understand why we approach the moon, why we invest in the such tremendous endeavor, and why some of the money for space are put on the moon and not on other projects. Uh, what I want to explain is the process at the level of the UN. This is a complex process. Usually it's a slow process at the level of the UN, but when a decision is taken, it's respected by all the world. Usually an association like our association or a member states make a proposal at the level of the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. This is discussed, analyzed, sometimes uh, commented by different member states. And the text is uh, adjust according to all these opinions. But in this case, it was not necessary to readapt the text. It was taken into account as it was proposed by our organization. Then the text is included in the report of COPOS and sent as a report to be approved by the General Assembly of the UN. We were, I say, uh, lucky in the way because everybody agreed on the proposal and was no way to discuss it years and years and sometimes happened at the level of the UN. Everybody approved, it was included this year in the report of COPOS and adopted uh, and approved in the end by the General Assembly just a few days ago. Uh, this is the process and uh, I had the experience of other international days at the level of the UN, international days connected with the space. By instance, 12th of April, it's uh, declared by the UN, the international day of the piloted space flights because on 12th of April, 
uh, Yuri Gagarin accomplished the first flight with a person from the Earth on board. Then is the asteroid day, 30 of uh, June. When on 30 of June, an asteroid fall down in the Tunguska region in 1908, it's a very important day to explain the people why it's important to know the asteroids and why it's important to uh, defend the planet against the asteroids. It was approved also in the framework of the UN, and I was also uh, the person who proposed it on behalf of the Association of Space Explorers. The third important day, it's now the International Moon Day. And I think this is uh, occasion, an occasion for all the world to promote further the space exploration, the cooperation and the mutual understanding in the exploration of the moon, the natural uh, satellite of the planet Earth. Thank you, George. Και τώρα είναι η στιγμή που θα ανακοινώσω ποιος είναι ο ρόλος της Κύπρου σε αυτή την ε, ανακοινωσή. Όπως έχετε δει, διάλεξαν την Κύπρο για να κάνουν το παγκόσμιο αυτό συνέδριο και διάλεξαν την Κύπρο για να κάνει αυτή την ανακοίνωση των Ηνωμένων Αθρών, της απόφασης των Ηνωμένων Εθνών. Ο ρόλος της Κύπρου δεν είναι απλώς το ότι ανακοινώνουμε αυτή τη μέρα, αλλά η Κύπρος είναι και η πρώτη χώρα που θα εφαρμόσει αυτή την μέρα, δηλαδή θα είναι και ιδρυτικό μέλος, founding member. Και εκτός αυτού, λόγω του ρόλου του Κυπριακού Οργανισμού Εξερεύνησης Διαστήματος, που συντονίζει χώρες στην ευρύτερη περιοχή, Αφρική, Μέση Ανατολή και Ανατολική Μεσόγειο, στα θέματα του διαστήματος και της αστρονομίας, λόγω αυτού του ρόλου, η Κύπρος θα έχει και συντονιστικό διεθνή ρόλο στην εφαρμογή αυτής της μέρας, παγκοσμίως, όχι μόνο στην ευρύτερη περιοχή. Και συζητούμε για να δούμε και ποιο ακόμη μεγαλύτερο ρόλο θα έχει η Κύπρος στην εφαρμογή και μετάδοση αυτής της μέρας παγκοσμίως, όταν θα εορταστεί για πρώτη φορά αυτό το καλοκαίρι στις 20 Ιουλίου. 